Please take your seats quickly, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Hi guys, and welcome to OneMinuteTennis.com. In today's session, I want to talk about the leg drive. I want to talk about how you can make a powerful foundation to use Newton's third law to get more power with less effort in your game. Now, tennis technique is so complicated. There's so many aspects to the game. It really is the most technical sport probably in the world that it's sometimes very easy to miss basic fundamental principles because of the details, because there's so many component parts. So a good idea sometimes is to look at other sports where these principles are obvious and then apply them into tennis. If we look at running, there's a big difference between marathon running and the 100-yard dash, in the, or 100 meters. In the 100 meters, the players have blocks and they get down and they power off. But they don't do that in the marathon. Why not? Because the marathon is exactly that. It's a marathon. It's a long race. That extra half second of speed, it doesn't make any difference. But in the 100 meters, the sprinters have to get as much power as they can. So they're in this low position, pushing away from the direction that they want to go. They're not pushing that way. They're pushing that way to go that way. Tennis is exactly the same. What we need to do is to push from the ground, get low, and then push away from the direction that we want to go. This will make for an explosive and powerful and quick movement. If, we are, if we're neutral, if the lower body is neutral, then it's difficult to generate that kind of power. So here's typically what I see from a lot of recreational players. There's a great deal of effort here and nothing happening here. What direction are my feet pushing? Nowhere. So now we'll look at something like the pro players and what we'll have is the back foot will receive the weight and the heel will be off the ground. Those are the two principles. I'll just show you in this direction. So look, the back foot has received the weight and the heel is off the ground. And the heel wants to be off the ground as low as possible, not as high as possible. It's not a fashion show. What we want to do is have it as low as possible, but off the ground and then push. And that will give you a drive in the opposite direction. It'll create tremendous energy. So once again, typical recreation position, the foot's flat to the ground, the base is narrow and they swing from the arm. This could be you. Or we have a wider base, the weight loads into the back foot, the heel is very close to the ground, but it's off the ground, and then swing. This will create a natural leg drive, and the leg drive should happen right in the heart of the stroke, right in the out of control part of the stroke. Remember, when you're thinking about tennis stroke, they are in control to out of control to in control movements. What does that mean? At the beginning of the stroke here, if you said to me, point the foot there or there or there, I can do anything I want because I'm in control. At the end of the stroke, if you said finish with the racket over the shoulder or finish with the racket down by the side, it's no problem because I'm in control. But in the middle part of the stroke here, the heart of the stroke, if you ask me to stop, I can't. If you ask me to change anything, I can't. And if I move in such a way that I can change it, then it's going to be useless. So make sure that you get that weight loaded into the back foot. Try and get a wide base. It's not always possible. And then get the heel just off the ground. If you hit these positions, then then push and everything will drive in the opposite direction to what you're pushing. That's through the ball and you'll have easy and effortless power. So it's in this position here and drive the ball. This is the biggest difference between good players and great players. This is the biggest difference between younger players and senior players. But it isn't that the senior players are not capable of doing it. It isn't that the good players are not capable of doing it. It's just that there's so much focus on learning the technique here that it's easy to miss the technique of the lower body and the feet and Newton's third law. I hope this makes sense. Love to know how it works in your game. You know I love your feedback and I try to reply to every single comment. If you like my ideas, check out the books on Amazon. They're a really detailed breakdown of the strokes with super simple solutions and great illustrations. For more information, check out the link at the end of this video. Or if you want more personalized advice, check out online coaching. I'm helping players in over 30 countries all over the world. For more information, have a look at the website or email me. So don't just stay upright and play with the arm. Play with the whole body, get down into the ground, and then let that force come back through the stroke, and you'll hit better and more powerful ground strokes, and you won't have any more errors because you're not swinging faster. The timing's the same, it's just that the power has increased. Thanks for watching and see you next time for more unique tennis lessons that really work.